Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Arthur J. Gallagher & Co. ticker AJG. Over the next five minutes, I will go over both my thoughts on the business valuation of this company and its business quality. We're going to dive right on in starting right now. Arthur JG is an insurance company and together with its subsidiaries provides insurance brokers, consultants, and third-party claims settlement and administrative services across the U.S., Australia, Bermuda, so many different countries. It consists of retail and wholesale insurance brokerage groups, consulting services, commercial not-for-profit. Um, they assist them in placement of specialized and hard place insurance. That's an important detail. Um, and wholesaler as well. So they have a risk management, basically insurance company. That's what we need to know when we dive into this. Now, return investing capital is interesting. The first thing I see is that they have been profitable every year for 20 years. That's always a very positive sign. I like to see that when I'm buying a company. It suggests to me that it's relatively high quality. Um, one thing I can see is they're a lot more volatile in their early days and they had maybe higher returns in their early days. But since, let's call it 2011, they've had a lot more stable returns in the 8 to 6% range on return on invested capital. Now, that's a little lower than I'd like to see, um, but there's some eccentricities with, you know, insurance companies that make them a little different. So this isn't a reasonable amount of return on invested capital. I'd like to see 10% plus, but it's been since 2010 since they had a 10% plus. So okay so far. I'm, I like the fact that there's no losses. That's a very positive sign, um, but okay. 10-year medium returns. You can see that they're able to boost the return on equity into the double-digit range. So it's greater than 10%, which is good. Um, I'd like to see a 15% return on equity. So they either would need more leverage or they would need a slightly higher return on invested capital to hit that mark for me. Now, where I get concerned is on valuation. The valuation here of a PE of 40 is, is very high. Um, now, it's high likely because of these 10-year Kagers. You see these double-digit rates of growth, and that's dr probably driving this valuation. But you have a problem. If you're going to grow earnings per share fast or revenue faster than your return on equity, you're going to be taking on debt. You're going to be taking on extra assets to do that. You're going to be changing and reducing your returns over time, and that's what we see. Revenue is growing faster than earnings per share because assets are growing faster than revenue. Um, and so because this assets are growing faster than revenue, faster than free cash flow and faster than earnings per share, you're getting worse and worse returns over time. I don't like that progression. And it's probably why the return on the returns on capital have declined in this chart over time. So normally these growth rates are very attractive. You'd like to see these 10 year growth rates, but you really need a substantially lower valuation multiple, especially when you think about return on equity is 12% here. That means if I want a 12% return on my investment, I need to be buying close to book value, but you have a price to book of 4.3. So you're substantially higher price at that. So valuation is not looking good, but let's see what we can see on the other statements. So income statement, you can see that they have grown their income well. It's basically tripled, you know, from that $1.50 range to $4.50 range in terms of earnings per share. Um, they have grown by issuing shares. So this is what you're seeing here. They're issuing shares because when I had it on this other page, they weren't able to grow faster than 12% without issuing shares because they don't have the return on equity. Their equity can't self-fund the growth. So again, as we dive into this, and you're, if you're enjoying what you're listening to so far, please like and subscribe to my pot, to this video. Um, you can hit the bell icon to get more updates as I put out new videos. So again, you're going to see this net income growing, and it's grown at an impressive rate. However, they're having to issue shares to pull that off. So earnings per share is actually doing worse than their net income growth. Their net income is up over 4x, but their earnings per share is a little under 3x. That's why that is. Now you can see asset growth has been substantial, um, almost a 10x in PP&E, but that's not a significant part of their balance sheet. Goodwill has been growing steadily, so they're making regular acquisitions, and long-term debt is growing as well. Um, cash flow. So you do see positive cash flow from operations. Again, that's all a really good sign. It means that it's relatively low risk of bankruptcy when you're having that solid cash flow from operations, but they are making constant acquisitions. They are constantly investing there. So your reinvestment rate, you have some risk there that they're going to make worse acquisitions over time. Um, I don't really like this. They have relatively low stock-based compensation. That's okay. Um, but 
you can see that they're always issuing stock in order to fund the growth of their company. And I, I don't like to see that. So for me, this company I'm going to avoid. I'm not going to invest myself. It doesn't even go on my watch list. These returns on equity and returns on capital are too low. And although they're not restricted in their growth from that, it does mean that they have to issue shares, that they have to borrow money in order to keep growing at those rates, which means not only are you having a high valuation, you're paying for a high valuation that includes dilution and includes the fact that they can't self-fund that growth. So they're taking on more and more risk over time in order to provide you the growth, which you think justifies your valuation. So for me, pass on quality, pass on valuation. It won't be in my watch list. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well so you can get updates when I upload future videos. That bell will give you a notification when I do so. Thank you for listening. Until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.